Descriptive statistics focus on summarizing, organizing, and clearly presenting data. They aim to highlight the essential features and patterns within a data set. Descriptive statistics are all about making data easy to understand. They summarize, organize, and present information clearly, focusing on showing what's important in a data set. In simple terms, it's like turning a complex, cluttered collection of information into a concise snapshot that reveals the most important insights at a glance. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I use four methods for creating descriptive statistics. I start with dynamic arrays, then use the analysis tool pack, and then use classic pivot tables. And finally, I create a Python function. Many different methods or approaches will ultimately achieve the same result or goal. Let me know in a comment which method you prefer. Now, let's switch to Excel. In this worksheet, I have a list that shows a client and an amount. And I have the same list in four different sheets because I'll be using four different methods for creating descriptive statistics like this example. I start by selecting cell D2, and I want to create a single cell dynamic array function. But let me granulize the concept first. In column D, I will have the labels sum, min, max, average, and standard deviation. While in column E, I will have the corresponding calculations. So to create the labels, what if I type an equal sign, and I type the different labels in curly brackets in double quotation, like this. When I hit enter, then I get a column of labels. I can also create in each cell in column E the corresponding function, but I want to stack them on top of each other, which requires a vStack function. Let's put all that in a single let function. I'm going to delete, and I expand the formula bar, Control shift u and I'll be creating my let function. Equal let, and the let function allows me to create some variables. So my first variable will be storing the labels. So I'll name it A and I type comma. And here I have the curly brackets and the different labels in double quotation. So A corresponds to the labels. I type a comma. To move to the next line, I hit Alt Enter. My second variable will be storing the amount column and I'll call it B and B refers to the range from B2 to B26. I then type a comma, and then I hit Alt Enter, and then my next variable will be named C, and C will be storing the different functions inside a vStack function, and it will look like this. And because the variable B is storing the range B2, B26, then I can replace every occurrence of B2, B26 by the variable B. And my function is much shorter. I type a comma. To move to the last line, I hit Alt Enter. And then my calculation will be putting the labels side by side with the functions that I want to edge stack A and C. I close the bracket for the edge stack. I close the bracket for the let function. And when I hit Enter, here is the result. I created my first descriptive statistics using dynamic array functions. In the next worksheet, I have the same exact list and I want to achieve the same result with a little variation by using a built-in tool called the Analysis Tool Pack. The Analysis Tool Pack is available in Excel, but you have to enable it. And to do that, you go to the File tab and then you click on Options. And in the Excel Options dialog box, you click on Add-in. And with Excel Add-in selected, you click on Go. And here you check the box for analysis tool pack and then hit OK. I already have it that I close this dialog box. I go to the data tab and the analysis tool pack is this command data analysis. I click on it and it opens the data analysis dialog box. We have different options. I'll be selecting descriptive statistics and then I hit OK. For the Descriptive Statistics dialog box, I need to specify the input range, and my input range 
will be from B1 to B26 uh, because I selected the label, then I checked the box labels in first row. My output range will be cell D2, then I click on cell D2. I want summary statistics and I hit OK. And here is the result. It couldn't be easier. I got descriptive statistics much more detailed without creating a single function using the analysis tool pack. In the next worksheet, I have the same exact list and I'll be creating my descriptive statistics by using a pivot table. With a single cell selected, I go to the insert tab of the ribbon, I click on pivot table. I want to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet in cell D2. I hit OK. And now here is the pivot table field list. Let me bring it closer. I'm going to drag the amount five times to the values drop area. So I drag the amount one, two, three, four, and then five. I drag the amount five times and it creates some of amount. I want to simulate the setup created by dynamic arrays. Then I'm going to drag values from the columns to the rows. Now I need to change some function and edit some labels. The first function returns the sum and that's fine. I select the second one and I want to replace it with a min. I right click, summarize values by, and I select a min. For the next one, I right click, summarize values by, and I select max. For the next one, I want an average, right click, summarize values by and select average. And for the last one, I right click, summarize values by, I don't find the standard deviation, then I click on more options and the value field settings dialog box opens. I select standard deviation. I hit OK and I finished creating my calculations. Now I need to edit the labels. I select the labels one at a time and I edit them on the left side of the Pivot Table Analyze tab under Active Field. I will be changing the first one to Sum, and I'll be changing the other labels as well. I finished creating my labels, and I was able to use classic Pivot Tables for generating descriptive statistics. In the last worksheet, I have the same exact list, but this time I'll be using Python. Python is a powerful and popular programming language that supports things like data manipulation and visualization, statistical modeling, machine learning, just to name a few. Now we can use Python directly from within Excel. I select cell D2 and I want to create a Python code. I can do that in different ways. I can go to the formulas tab of the ribbon and click on insert Python. I can use a shortcut, Control alt shift p or I can simply type an equal sign PY, equal sign PY, and then I open bracket and it adds this green icon denoting that I can write a Python code. I start by storing the source data in a Python object to be able to reuse it. We may call it DF, short for data frame. You can think of a data frame as a table that contains data. So I'll be typing df and it equals, I select my entire list. It was able also to identify the first row as header and that's fine. To commit the code, I hit control enter. Now I have a data frame and if I click on this cell, there is a little icon that pops up if I click on this icon and I select show data type card. You can see that this data frame is storing my source data and I can use it in any other code. Python in Excel comes loaded with many libraries. To see the libraries, you can click on the formulas tab, click on initialization and here are the different libraries. I'm going to close the initialization. You can also import more libraries. How do I take advantage of these libraries? Let's take as an example the pandas library and a method called describe. A method in Python is very similar to a function in Excel, but instead it operates on an object 
and I have a data frame object. This is the Python object. So let's test it out. What if I click in the formula bar at the end of the Python code I created and I type dot describe. I open and close bracket and then to commit the Python code, I hit control enter. If you want to see this code, you can right click and select show data type card. And now you can see my descriptive statistics that are returned by the describe method. But I don't want to see the Python object. I want to see it as an Excel value. And to do that, I can either click on this little icon to the left side of the formula bar and select Excel value, or I can use the shortcut Shift Control Alt M. When I click on it, here are my descriptive statistics. This is the output of the Python code. I created descriptive statistics using different methods. I use dynamic array functions. I use the analysis tool pack. I also use the classic pivot table and I use the describe method in a Python code. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. Share it to spread the knowledge and write me in a comment which method you prefer. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.